good day and remember that God loves you. What a wonderful thought that is as we start today on February the 9th. There are 326 days left until next year. Here's your scripture of the day. Comes from 2 Corinthians 1 in verse 12. For our rejoicing in this, the testimony of our conscience that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have had our conversation in the world and more abundantly to you, Ward. What a beautiful scripture that is to start us off. Let's keep rolling here. If you want to read the Bible in a year, you need to open up to Leviticus chapter 6, verse and chapter 7. And in Matthew 25, verses 1 to 10. We're moving along. Here's your thoughts for the day. Only as man brings his life into harmony with God, does that life have balance and meaning. Then man finds that he's not s simply a mass of evolving dirt coming from nowhere and going nowhere. I think that's the beautiful thing of having faith in God, isn't it? Is that we have a knowledge and a purpose that there is something beyond all that. Imagine the opposite. If we had no belief and no faith and, and how sad it is to think that in the end, there's nothing. We live in hope each day. So that's a good thought. He who angers you controls you. That's your second thought for the day. And think about that. Nobody has any power over you unless you give that to them. That's uh, your enemy, the devil, or anybody out there. They can have no effect on you unless you allow them to. So be at peace in the spirit of the Lord. And finally, dwell not upon thy weariness. Thy strength shall be according to the measure of thy desire. Motivation for today. Religion is man-made, but the gospel is the gift of God. On this day in history in 1916, World War I. Britain Institute's conscription. In 1964, Beatlemania grips America as people tune in to the Ed Sullivan show with 70 million viewers, uh, a stat that took a long time to surpass. And in 1994, Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat and Israeli's foreign minister, Simon Perez, reach agreement on security issues that have stalled the Israeli PLO peace negotiations. And for 4,000 years, it continues until the Lord returns. Personal story of the day, if you have been reading along in Proverbs, we've been talking about the wisdom uh, in Proverbs, and we've been looking at Proverbs chapter 1 today, verses 8 to 19. And there's a popper, popular there's a popular bumper sticker that says, "I'm the person your parents warned you about." <laughs> it's easy to chuckle over this, but today's verses show that such an admission is really nothing to laugh about. Uh, we begin uh, with the command, "My son, here." These instructions were probably written by King Solomon. Recall that the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream, promising him whatever he wanted. We read that in 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 5. And Solomon desired an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. Indeed, we read in 1 Kings 4, 32 to 34, that Solomon wrote, over 3,000 Proverbs, and we only get a short, uh, con, uh, concise edition of that. So verse 8 says the same thing, both positively, listen to instructions, and negatively, do not forsake teaching. This echoes what we read yesterday. 
that fools are those who reject wisdom. As to further encourage the child, this exhortation is likened to the beauty of a crown or a string of pearls. The specific instruction given in this passage concerns a warning about people who could entice this child. Today, this might be a warning against getting involved with the wrong crowd. As it says in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, be not deceived, evil communication corrupt good manners. Notice that these dangerous individuals appeared to be nearly universal desire to be a part in the crowd. They say, come on with us. It's great over here. This strengthens the false promise of belonging. We can almost hear them say, everybody's doing this. As my mom used to say, if everybody's jumping off the cliff, would you jump off too? You know, it'll be cool. But in addition to the false unity, these unwise and foolish promises gain. But clearly, what they're up to is no good. Rather than simply telling the child not to get involved with such people, the parents here paints a graphic picture of what these bloodthirsty individuals leave out of their smooth sounding invitation. Their evil ways lead to death. The trap is set is, is actually for themselves. The invitation they offer in verse 11 becomes the description of their destiny. Even if these individuals don't lose their physical life, it's clear that they've lost their souls. No wonder this parent says, avoid such people. So key. And I've heard far too many stories lately that just echo this where parents, uh, you know, just turn their eye for a second and the child's on the internet. And next thing you know, troubles are instilled there. But we raise up a child in the ways of the Lord. And when they are old, they will not depart from it. We do our best. And we want to continue to be involved in our child's life. Devotional thought for the day. If you were to select some of the most influential figures in the span of ages, men and women who have affected millions of lives, what names would be on your list? Just think about that for a second. I think one of the names that would appear on all of our lists without exceptions would be the name Jesus Christ. Let's hope so anyway. Uh, Reginald Price writing about Jesus of Nazareth in Time Magazine, December 1999, declared that a serious argument can be made that no one else's life has proved remotely as powerful and enduring as that of Jesus. So when this man, born in an obscure village, Two millennia ago declared, I am the light of the world, and heaven and earth shall not pass away, but my words shall not pass away. He was making predictions that history has verified. And we can see that around the world today. Jesus has undeniably been the world's most influential person. But does he impacted your... Jesus has undeniably been the world's most influential person. But does he impact your life personally? Many start out with the power of Christ in them, being baptized in water and in the spirit, speaking in tongues. But things can change. His influence can be neglected. Does he still transform your life? Unlike all other notable people who eventually died, Jesus is still miraculously alive think about that he is not dead but he lives that's our hope if we look in second peter chapter 2 verse 9 here's your second thought the lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished life seems to be a mystery we always heard the saying, what goes around comes around. But we question, when? For us as humans, tomorrow is too late. We need the vengeance today. We can't understand why anyone would get away with things 
that they do, even under man's laws or God's laws. It looks to us like they are going scot-free. A friend once said, I'll never live to see that guy punished. But he meant it. I told him, don't look for him to be punished in this life. But rest assured, he will get his just reward. If not in this lifetime, God will take care of him on judgment day. Yeah, it's good sound thought, isn't it? We don't always know why things happen as we tend to be short rather than long-term thinkers and planners. This difficulty was faced when God was trying to bring Paul to repentance. God's saints refused to take the gospel to Paul. They wanted him punished because they feared him. He killed saints. God had another plan. Saul became the most notable authority on God's word. He became Paul the apostle, the great writer and promoter of the New Testament values, done mostly while Paul was in prison in Rome. We don't understand why God lets some off the hook here in this life, but he says his ways are not our ways, not our thoughts, his thoughts. He has a plan, and it will be carried out in his own time. We have to be faithful and patient, letting God handle the paperwork. We have a couple of fun facts for the day to finish you off with. Anosmia is a condition that makes people unable to smell. There's your word for the day. And... For those pet lovers, I have a dog. I'm sure many of you do as well. Dogs have 1 million smell cells per nostril, and their cells are up to 100 times larger than those of humans. No wonder they can scent dinner time a mile away and come when you call them. Here's your closing thought for the day. The picture of health requires a happy frame of mind. We keep saying it. A joyful heart doeth good like a medicine. Let's close off in prayer. But before doing so, let's remind you, click that thumbs up button and uh, subscribe to our channel. Share this with somebody that uh, you think might benefit from it. We enjoy making these videos as much as you do, hopefully watching them. And we will close in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for preparing a way for us, for giving us wide words to sound living. We just pray as we go forward each day, Lord, that our lives can, uh, can be reflections of you, that our light can shine your light to those that are lost and in darkness and provide them with a path. Just bless everybody that's hearing this today in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, thank you again for joining in. And you can turn off the video or you can stick around for the fun jokes of the day. Ba -da -ba -da -bum -bum. According to a news report, a certain private school in Washington was recently faced with a unique problem. A number of 12-year-old girls were beginning to use lipstick and would put it in the bathroom. Well, that was fine. But one day they started taking the lipstick on their mouths, pushing it up against the mirror and leaving a mess of lipstick smiles all over the mirror if you could imagine but every night the maintenance man would remove them and the next day the girls would put them back finally enough was enough and the principal said okay we're gonna bring all the girls down to the washroom and there they were all lined up and the principal was giving them a little exhortation about look girls you're making it a little difficult for this poor maintenance person to clean the mirrors. Would you just take a look at what he's got to do? Go ahead. And he reached with his squeegee, dipped it into the toilet, and wiped the lipstick off of the mirrors. Since that day, there's been no problem with lipstick on the mirrors. All right. Well, then your second joke for the day is some people are slow at getting the punchline. You know, it might take them a while to get it. We just hope that after they think about it, they'll get it. But in fact, you have to be careful telling some people jokes on Saturday night. Well, you don't want them laughing in the middle of the church service on Sunday when they finally catch on. All right, that's the end of it. Thank you all, and hopefully we'll see you again tomorrow.